Animating Shakespeare, Engaging Students Through Embodied and Virtual Learning. Eilish Flanagan, PhD candidate at the School of Education in the National University of Ireland, Galway. This project will investigate the potential of combining technology and ensemble and performative approaches to education to help students engage with texts on a deeper level. Participants include post-primary English students, both male and female. The Highland Report deduced that there is an increasing number of students entering third level education who exhibit serious deficiencies in basic literacy and analytical skills and there is a growing concern about the leaving certificate across the third level sector, particularly its failure to foster problem solving and independent learning. Therefore, this project will use Shakespearean drama as a base for exploring the potential of ensemble and performative approaches to learning to enhance engagement and critical literacy skills, because it is essentially a script to allow students to explore timeless and universal problems in both an emotional and a physical manner. So what is ensemble? Ensemble is an approach to theatrical presentation that involves all cast members working together on behalf of the drama, rather than emphasising individual performances. This unified system of performance can be used in English education as a means to explore a text and encourage engagement with it. Using various acting techniques such as the whoosh storytelling or grandma's footsteps, an ensemble approach allows students to concentrate on the task at hand together without feeling self-conscious, and this is important for second level students in particular. So in terms of technologies to use, obviously as we all know at this stage the EU Kids Online final report it dispels any um, misnomers about the fact that our, our, our teenagers are digital natives and that they know it all in terms of creating their own content. However, this is simply not the case. So I will attempt to use technologies, specifically narrative technologies, in order to help students engage with um, the ensemble acting and the text. In terms of narrative technology, this refers to any digital media that caters for storytelling in a range of formats. Examples include Windows Movie Maker, iMovie, I Can Animate, Comic Life and Audacity. So this synergy of storytelling and computing will hopefully combine the ubiquitous nature of narrative and timelessness need for autobiography and new development in educational technology to, as Hall 2012 put it, enhance learners' achievements and confidence, their intra and interpersonal learning. Combining the use of narrative technology and ensemble will hopefully encourage students to integrate their knowledge and learning in a meaningful context. And hopefully this will result in a productive, aesthetic use of technology to bring learning to life. Therefore, this project aims to explore the extent to which technology enhanced ensemble approaches to English education at post-primary senior level maximise student engagement with text and encourage the development of students' critical literacy skills. And to this end, it will also explore what intervention design is most successful. This project uses a design-based research approach. DBR is an iterative process whereby interventions are conceptually designed, informed by both practice and theory, tested, and then redesigned and are retested. It is naturalistic in terms of its real-world settings, which means it's practical and adaptable. It is basically responsive to the emergent experimental nature of things. Since DVR entails designing exemplar processes, these are the interventions, and products, these are the models for best practice, its transitive nature is why it is so suited to educational research. It amounts to, as John Dewey put it, intelligent experimentation. Cobb et al. summarised this methodological approach as follows. Prototypically, design experiments entail both engineering particular forms of learning and systematically studying those forms of learning within the context defined by the means supporting them. This designed context is subject to test and revision and the success of iterations that result play a role similar to that of systematic variation in experiment. 
The first iteration focused on participants animating Shakespeare's Macbeth. The iteration emphasized the digital humanities in education. It endeavored to encourage participants to use technology productively rather than in a passive, almost televisual manner. The participants were unfamiliar with number one, the text, and number two, technology. The process was centered around engagement, student engagement with the text, and it involved a pre-visit to the school, workshops conducted in the university's iPedagogy suite, and then a post-visit to the school. During the pre-visit, students were introduced to Shakespearean language. The workshops then occurred in the university, and they involved an ensemble section and then a narrative technology section. During the ensemble section of the workshop, first of all, we used ensemble as warm-up activities for students. The next thing was that students were introduced to Macbeth using the Leon Garfield animation. This is 30 minutes in length. Once that was completed, students then recapped on the animation themselves um, using ensemble techniques primarily focused on the 32 second Macbeth, which involves students performing the summarised version of the play. Once the ensemble section of the workshop was complete and students themselves had explored the text and given their own personal responses, the second section of the workshop was a narrative technology section. First of all, students were introduced to two pieces of technology. Number one, I can animate, which allows animations, and number two, iMovie, which allows post-production of the movie. Students were given the task to animate Act 1, Scene 1 of Macbeth from any one particular character's perspective. They were given Play-Doh to fashion their own characters and props from, and they were given a free scope to do the animation however they saw fit. That completed the workshop part of the process. The post-visit then involved a focus group feedback session involving both student participants and teacher participants. If chance will have me king, then chance will plan me. Unsex me here! <laughs> if it were done, when it is done. Screw your courage to the speaking place. Is this a dagger that I see before me? Flip it. A little water tears it up the sea. Fly, good fiends, fly! Blood will have blood. Double, double, try to trouble. He has killed me, buddy. Flee, flee for country. Out, damn spot! Out, out, brief camel. Turn, hell, hell, turn. Lay on like dust. Hail, King of Scotland. Participant feedback suggested that the students were enjoying the ensemble activities once the warm-ups were done and they reported being very excited about using technology in a productive way. 
However, student participants did suggest that the content was too vast to cope with. While some students reported using Play-Doh was a very creative way to embody the, the characters and the plot, others suggested that having to fashion your own scene as such before animating it was too time consuming for them. While some students reported frustrations with using IMAX, saying that it hindered their productivity, others reported improvements in ITC skills and their use of IMAX following the, the workshops. Students reported that a basic knowledge of the text was enhanced following the workshop. In terms of teacher participants, feedback was in general positive, with teachers asking for the worksheets and resources to use in their own classroom and they were excited about the next workshop series and they expressed desire to be involved again. They found Ensemble a very useful way to encourage students to embody their learning and their understanding. They also thought that the combined use of embodied learning and virtual learning was new and innovative and found it exciting. In terms of researcher feedback, I did find that it was an extremely engaging and interactive environment and the ensemble did work well to explore character, plot and imagery within a text. Students I found were extremely unfamiliar with the technology and how to use it in a less televisual, more productive and active manner. I found that a workshop like this needs well-timed breaks for two reasons. First of all, students are used to working in perhaps 30, 35 or 40 minute intervals at school and their concentration does wane. Also, when students are given a task, be it the ensemble or the narrative technology tasks, well-timed breaks are needed in order to maintain their uh, concentration on the task because once the sense of workflow is interrupted, students do find it difficult to build up the momentum once again. There were structured design briefs for the second part of the workshop in terms of animating Act 1, Scene 1 from any character's perspective. Students benefited from this and they liked the structure of it, so this is something that could be incorporated into the next iteration. I too agree that the content was too vast and it certainly needs to be scaled down in order to enhance engagement with the text, which I think was lost a little bit in terms of the variables that were in the first iteration. In accordance with the feedback from the first iteration, certain elements of the second iteration then were redesigned. The second iteration took more of a structured focus towards the animations, with the workshops taking a performative, comparative and reflective level. First of all, the participating students were given a choice of extract, either from Shakespearean text or Shakespearean poem in order to encourage students to engage personally with the text beforehand and to make an informed decision on which text they would like to work with. Next, there was a pre-visit, the workshops and the post-visit. In the pre-visit, the student participants explored their various texts through the use of ensemble once again. This was their performative level. During the workshops in the university's iPedagogy suite, Ensemble was used to recap on the previous visit, but also to explore comparative elements either within their chosen text or between two or three different texts. This was their comparative level. Also, students were then tasked with choosing how to animate their, uh, their piece. Students were furnished with storyboards for all tasks as well as an animation design brief which clearly outlined the requirements that they had to fulfil in order to complete the task. Students were given plenty scope in terms of how to animate and how to fulfil the task. Once the story of their text was completed through animation using the same technologies as before, Students then moved on to a reflective level of the workshops. This was where students used comic life in order to reflect both on the process itself and also on what they have learned about the actual text. This was the reflective element. The post-visit again involved focus groups and also 
a quick online survey using Socrative for individual feedback. The participant feedback from the second iteration was much more positive. Students reported a deeper knowledge of the text following the, this intervention. They reported an understanding of how to analyse imagery in particular within text. They also welcomed the socialising opportunities as well as the opportunities to work with new peers they ordinarily wouldn't have as everything was focused around group work and pair work. The teachers reported that the students' overall personal response to text was on a much deeper level than it had been before the intervention. Teachers felt that their students were better equipped to engage with and analyse sections of texts than they were before they were involved in the intervention. In terms of researcher feedback, students gave more personal responses to questions following the second iteration of the intervention. It did take longer to complete tasks, but on average, Students engaged more with the elements of the text on a deeper level than they had done either before the intervention at all or even before the first iteration of the intervention. Their answers to particular questions on the text were less generic and more specific and students tended to use a lot more quotes in their answers and in their personal responses to the text despite not being asked for them or even prompted to learn them off, which would be traditional. Since these iterations are part of a doctoral study on student engagement with text, subsequent iterations focus on the issues surrounding measurement of engagement. To this end, it is important to maintain comparisons with control group and national averages. Giving students choice in terms of text and technologies they use it seems to be of paramount importance in the study in terms of pre- and post-intervention analysis. Future iterations will draw on wider concepts of animating literacy with a much broader, more robust framework in terms of embodying narratives. Time frame and content revisions will also need to be addressed. To this end, the project will focus on a concept called TEAM, Technology Enhanced ensemble model of English education. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this presentation.